So in this video, we're going to talk about Cairo, a graphic novel by G. Willow Wilson. So this is a really cool story. It combines Arabic folklore, Egyptian folklore, and contemporary political issues. And I think it has a really uplifting message, which you always love to see. So basically, the, no the graphic novel kind of follows three sets of pairs. Uh, the first person we get introduced to is Ashraf, who's a drug smuggler um, who's just brought a load of hash back into Cairo. Um, he He's paired primarily with Tova, who's an Israeli soldier who was on border duty, um, has, been, has been wounded, and she ended up escaping into the desert where uh, she was picked up by some Bedouin who took her into Cairo. She's trying to get back to Israel, uh, and, and Ashraf basically agrees to help her. In the meantime, Ashraf has sold a hookah to a young Lebanese-American named uh, Shahid. Shahid is paired with Shams, who's a jinn, or genie. Uh, jinn is the, the more proper term. Um, Shams had been confined in the hookah, and uh, when Shahid more or less releases him, Shams basically takes Shahid under his wing. Shahid, we get hints, and then eventually sort of learn mo more overtly, had intended to... Uh, commit a suicide bombing because he had helped um, he had helped a different terrorist organization he had helped a terrorist organization basically with computer hacking and things like this um, and he couldn't he couldn't bear the guilt so he decides to go and and blow himself up on the road to Beirut Shams takes him under his wing um, etc etc so that's the second pairing so we've got ashraf and to tova we've got um, shams and shahid and then we've got kate and ali um, kate is a young american who has come from uh, orange county california and basically come to cairo to do sort of charity work good work missionary type stuff not really just missionary but like charity kind of stuff um and ali is a, a dissident journalist he's somebody who hasn't necessarily made enough noise that he's really let that like he's been arrested but his his anti-government writings pro-democratic writings etc have been censored so there we go uh kate gets lost on the way to her hostel and uh, Ali agrees to, to take her there, at which point they get kidnapped by some thugs working for Nar, who is a drug kingpin slash magician, uh, the one who, who bound Shams in the hookah. Um, Nar wants the hookah back the hookah that uh, Ashraf essentially stole from him, more or less, um, and then sold to Shahid. So, Nar has kidnapped Ali, who is Ashraf's friend, uh, and Kate, who is incidental to Ashraf, um, in order to, to ransom the hookah back. Ashraf obviously doesn't have the hookah, so his first stage on his journey is to try and find Shahid and get the hookah back. Shahid is, again, now under the tutelage of Shams. And Shams is interesting because he's a jinn, but... Um, he sort of explains the whole granting wishes concept 
not necessarily in terms of overt magic. Um, but he says, so Shahid asks, why did you do that? So Shahid wishes he doesn't have to pay for breakfast. That's his first wish. Um, and Shams has a waiter basically trip and, and crash into their table. Uh, he then agrees to pay for the, the whole meal. Shahid says, why did you do that? Couldn't you just have made the money up here or something? And Shams explains, not how it works, kid. We don't pull things out of thin air. We manipulate probability. The ability to create belongs to someone else. So Shams is interesting because he's clearly a devoted Muslim. Um, but this idea of jinn as manipulating probability rather than doing sort of overt magic is really kind of an interesting one because it's very, very different than, I mean, Disney's Aladdin is is probably the genie, the djinn that most Americans are going to be familiar with. Shams is a very different type of character. Um, Shams recognizes that Shahid has a great destiny, but he's not initially upfront about what that is uh, because Shahid has to come to it on his own. So Shams is taking Shahid around, uh, helping him sort of start to learn how to to exist in this world of the supernatural, the magical. Shams also manages to help Ali and Kate. Um, they escape through a secret chamber door that the thugs don't know about. The thugs basically put them in an old tomb. Um, and Ali and, she, and and Kate escape through this door, uh, through this secret door into the under Nile, which is, um, I guess, a part of Egyptian folklore, but I don't really know that much about it beyond what, what we get in this, um, which is basically that it's a sort of portal to the land of the dead, um, and it's a space in which the laws of physics seem not to apply. Um, and it's a space inhabited by not necessarily as beneficent Jim as Shams. Um, it's a space occupied by Shaitan, um, and, and a bunch of his sort of minions. And there's actually a moment where Shams... So Shahid is, is, is shot at one point and Shams brings him to the under Nile to heal him. And there's a confrontation between Shams and Shaitan. Um, uh, also known as Iblis. Um, and, and, and what Basically, what happens is Shams tries to expel Iblis from uh, the Under Nile. He, he tries to bless the river and expel uh, his relative, basically, um, his, his evil relative. And Iblis... So Shams says, leave Shaitan, you have no place here. And Iblis says, but I like it here. The jinn have a right to the empty places, or at least the jinn who did not cower and scrape before Adam like you. So again, we've got this sort of setup between Shams, who uses magic to manipulate probability in the name of uh, Allah, in the name of Islamic uh, principles, but then we've also got other jinn who who are evil per se. I, I don't know. It's hard to necessarily say whether they are evil as such or whether they simply represent a different ethical position. But that's one of the things we do get a lot in this graphic novel is contrasts of ethical positions. 
And we see these across the pairings because we have uh, Kate and Ali who have very different ideas about what it takes to help uh, people in Egypt. Um, and, and that actually becomes a big point of contention while they're in the under Nile because Iblis tries to pit them against one another uh, by playing off their distrust for one another and trying to build that up to a violent reaction. Then we've got Ashraf and Tova, and their, I mean, their conflict is fairly obvious and straightforward because she's an Israeli border guard who's in charge, who's responsible for stopping smugglers, and he's a drug smuggler. Uh, he's he's an, an Arab drug smuggler, in fact. Um, and then Shahid and Shams, their conflict is about the ethics of violence and the ethics of forgiveness, um, things like this. Because, again, Shahid had come to Cairo intending to go to Beirut and, and blow himself up. Shams stands for peace. He stands for acceptance. He stands for the power of community and of working together. And he slowly imparts this lesson. But one of the interesting things is that while there are these ethical conflicts between each of these pairings, none of them are overtly evil. It's really only Nar and Iblis who are who are particularly evil. But like at one point um Shahid and Tova are sort of talking about uh about why she was was doing what she was doing. So he asks, what were you doing so close to the border? She says, why should you know? He says, because I want to know. She says, she says, I refuse to serve in the occupied territories. I've seen the camps. I didn't think it was right. But I've been in the army since I was 18. I've been decorated. I want to serve my country. They couldn't discharge me without looking bad, so I was sent to the border to keep smugglers from crossing into the Negev, the shittiest assignment they could think of. So what we get here is the a sort of recognition of the challenging politics of the Middle East and this idea that by moving past the sort of one-dimensional cartoonish conception of each side that Arabs are all universally dedicated to the destruction of Israel, that Isra Israelis are uh, brutal, heartless occupiers, etc., etc. By painting a more complex picture, Wilson s moves toward this central theme that it's only by embracing one another, by understanding our differences and not just understanding but actively engaging with our differences seeing them not as insurmountable barriers but as ways in which we can learn and grow and become better people as individuals and better communities as a whole this for me is ultimately the message of cairo and I, I think that's a fantastic message. I'm 100% behind it. Um, and ultimately, the sort of resolution of the conflict in the graphic novel, Nara is attempting to open a particular box. It's a box that's incredibly powerful because it contains... An invisible word, the word East, uh, which is a, which of course has post-colonial resonances. The idea that because uh, the idea 
is that the box containing the word east, the symbolic invisible word, had been traded in the West for generations. And now it needs to come back to the people of the East, come back to, to in this case, the people of Cairo. And Shahid, so uh, Shams is killed at one point, but he gives his fire spirit to Shahid um, so that Shahid can live. And he's half human, half jinn. Which works out fantastically well because it makes him apparently impervious to both the things that Nar could do to him as a human and to the things Nar could do to him as a djinn. And so he takes control of this box and he gives it to Ali, the journalist. And Ali opens it and he, he has this sort of revelation and he says, Cairo will read again. And so we end up, I mean, we end up back there. Um, everybody sort of manages to come together. Ali continues writing. He gives Kate a job uh, and is at his newspaper, etc., etc. Um, Tova, while she goes back to Israel, manages to sneak back across the border because she and Ashraf have fallen in love. Shams becomes... Um, a, a, a student of theology and so everybody is sort of brought together and again I think it's a I think it's a beautiful story when the differences are not it's not that the differences are overcome it's that the community becomes stronger for the differences.